Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Alam nyo ba, I've been living here in my own condo for a little over a year na. Parang kamakailan lang when I was sharing my excitement sa pag-move in, tingin ng furniture and appliances, but ang bilis talaga ng panahon. And let me tell you, I've been living in condos since 2015, 8 years na. Pero iba talaga yung sense of fulfillment pag sarili mong property yung finafurnish mo. It's a wonderful adulting journey I wish everyone gets to experience as well. Anyway, sa first year ko as a condo owner, marami din ako natutunan na minsan napapaisip ako, sana pala no, I had this conversation with a friend na someone told me these things before deciding on my first property. But, as your tita guys, I got you. Kasi today, that's what I'm gonna share with you. Yung mga key learnings ko as a first-time condo owner. But this time, we'll focus on the small things we often overlook or forget to consider when choosing our first property. Important to mga factors ito guys kasi based sa experience ko, these would affect your overall satisfaction sa property na bibilihin nyo. But before we get started, quick thanks lang din to RLC Residences for partnering with us today. RLC Residences is a really promising property in a destination estate called Shera Valley Gardens. And actually, kaka-launch lang ng fourth building nila. Yung first three buildings, kahit na 2020 to 2022 sila ni launch, peak ng pandemic yon, almost completely sold out na. But let me save the details for later. Simulan natin sa importance ng area and surrounding developments. Definitely, when we're comparing condominium projects, it's check natin yung budget, size and layout ng unit, different amenities that they feature. But equally important sa factors na to ay yung surrounding developments and yung area. Why? Kasi when real estate investors buy properties either to flip later on or to lease out, kinoconsider nila tong mga factors na to. Tayo din, if we're gonna buy a property as a residence, dapat aware din tayo dito. Kasama na dyan, of of course, yung security and safety ng area, tsaka kung flood-prone ba siya. Yung accessibility sa mga establishments na madalas yung pinupuntahan, like restaurants, malls. Ako guys, personally, madalas ako sa convenience stores. And of course, yung development plan nung area wherein the condo property will be situated. I mentioned this in one of my talks last year, na there's a growing preference for township developments or yung mga destination estates. You can think of them as a city within a city. Essentially, Ida-develop na lang isang buong area, magkakaroon ng commercial and residential buildings, offices, recreational areas, and amenities to support the community. Kumbaga, kung doon ka nakatira, no, anything that you might need is within vicinity na lang. So, example nito is Bridgetown along C5. An upcoming destination estate is Robinson's Lands, Shera Valley, which is located sa Kainta Rizal. Along lang siya, Ortigas Avenue extension, and it's primed to be the first premier development in the East. Yung commercial areas doon, currently, meron na doon yung second largest Starbucks in the Philippines, which is a good indicator of market potential. Upcoming Robinson's Mall and a lot of offices. Now, for the residential part naman ng Shera Valley, RLC Residences is developing the Shera Valley Valley Gardens na as I've mentioned earlier just recently launched their fourth building which will be turned over ng 2028. So currently pre-selling pa siya. And before I forget I mentioned ko na that they are offering a 5% launch discount. So if you want to explore more about the project ilalagay ko lahat ng details sa description box. Next thing na dapat yung i-consider is your lifestyle. Now I understand lahat naman tayo kinoconsider natin yung lifestyle natin to some extent but a lot of people I've talked to consider their current lifestyle Style. Ang mas masasuggest ko is if you're gonna get a property, consider your lifestyle in the next 10 to 15 years. Kasi for now, baka single ka, but in the next 5 years, you plan to get married, have children, or right now, you want to be in CBD kasi nandun yung office mo, but may implement pa lang permanent work from home arrangement, hybrid setup, or you plan to grow your online business na pala full-time. Sa case na yun, for example, no, instead of buying a property in the CBD, it might be wiser to go with properties in a recent areas. Why? First, for the same budget, definitely mas makakakuha ka ng malaking unit. And second, real property taxes are way cheaper outside of the CBDs. One more thing you need to consider under lifestyle is your mode of transportation. Maganda yung location ng condo ko right now. It's really near BGC. But ang problem ko is limited ang access to public transportation. Walang malapit na jeep, walang malapit na bus. Dito dinadaanan ng mga taxis. So, as someone na walang private vehicle, 
nakadepende lang ako sa Grab. And since malapit ako sa BGC, pag rush hour, sobrang hirap talagang mag-book. So if I may recommend lang ha, regardless if you have your own private vehicle or not, look for a property na accessible ang public transportation. Kasi what if coding ka? What if nasira yung car mo, kailangan mo lumabas? It's always better to have options when it comes to transportation. Also under lifestyle, if you plan to live in the unit with your family, make sure na clarified nyo sa agent ilan yung maximum occupants for the unit type you're eyeing. Kasi yung studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom units, magkakaiba yan ng maximum allowed residence. If you're planning to buy a condo then most likely naisip nyo na rin naman na kailangan nyo mag-downsize ng amount of items to bring into your new home. But make a list of the items na non-negotiables nyo. Kung baga, package deal kayo with them and allocate space for that. For example, if you're a frequent traveler, yung mga luggages nyo. And then anything that you need for your business or work. Class under lifestyle siguro is an often overlooked aspect, pet ownership. Most of the condo developments naman are pet friendly, but there are actually policies pagdating sa pets. Specifically, ano yung mga types of pets that you can bring in and yung size ng pet. Kasi hindi porket pwede yung dog sa condo, lahat ng types of dogs will be allowed. Usually, may limit yan sa sizes. Next thing that you need to consider is the quality of the community. And I cannot stress this enough. It's a very important factor that would affect your overall satisfaction sa place of residence nyo. Quality ng community and how disciplined your neighbors are. Guys, may mga horror experience din ako <laughs> pagdating sa neighbors. Like yung sa last unit na nirentahan ko sa South. Grabe yung halos katapat kong unit, they would blast their music while leaving their front door open. Sobrang ingay nila sa common areas. Others naman would litter sa mga common areas or would not clean up after their pets. So all these things kasi in turn would affect the overall maintenance and upkeep of the condo development. Paano mo ba masasabi na maganda yung community? There are some factors you want to look out for. Yung reputation ng developer and the price range of the property. These would somehow determine the type of buyers that would be attracted by the development. So from a buyer's point of view kasi diba, we tend to take care of things that we pay for most especially kung pricey yung purchase niya. At the same time when the homeowners know na yung developer maayos yung after sales nila and they are committed to maintaining the property and the surrounding community. The homeowners themselves are more likely to be active and responsible members of the community. On bottom line, check nyo yung reputation ng developer. And actually, ito guys, may patita tip ako sa inyo na hindi ko nagawa when I bought my first two properties. You can go to the website of the developer and check kung meron na silang awards. For example na lang sa RLC Residences, when I check their website, may list of awards sila kasama yung best developer, best community builder, and then yung Shara Valley Gardens sa development in particular, best sustainable development tong 2022. So, additional research lang yan but very helpful. Next thing that you need to consider is the availability of open spaces. Now guys, ever since I left corporate, alam nyo naman yan, halos 24-7 ako nasa bahay. I think makakarelate yung mga nag-work from home dito. I quickly learned to appreciate the availability of secure open spaces and good landscaping within my vicinity. Yung green spaces guys, in particular, hindi lang yan pang mga aesthetic aesthetic, but they have a lot of benefits like they help with the air quality, they help reduce noise pollution, tsaka nakakatulong siya sa overall mental and physical well-being. Napansin nyo ba yun na mas nakaka-enjoy mag-jog, mag-walk, may mga green spaces. Actually, isa to sa mga pinaka nagustuhan kong feature sa Shara Valley Gardens kasi meron silang dedicated na jogging path, walk trail, may bicycle lane doon. There's an abundance of open open space and greeneries na conducive to a more relaxed and holistic living. Ito yung mapapayo ko sa inyo when looking for a condo unit. Don't buy a unit na tutulugan nyo lang. Buy a condo unit na titirahan nyo. Kung baga, i-consider nyo yung quality of life nyo once you live there. Speaking of common areas, let's talk about the amenities and the building features. Developers man, most especially the big ones, meron na yung papool, pa gym, play area, but some developers offer more. So for example, ako guys, isa sa pinaka-struggle ko ngayon is the lack of drying area for my laundry. Kasi as a general rule, no, bawal magsampay sa balcony. So ang setup ko ngayon, 3 to 4 days of the week, merong nakabalas 
Alandra na sinampay dito sa sala ko. May eyesore half of the time. So make sure na merong dedicated drying area na nakatago sa unit nyo or a designated drying area sa roof deck ng condo development nyo. Sa so mga titas and titos na naka-work from home and hybrid setup, alam ko medyo struggle yung pag-set ng work-life boundaries. Pero alam nyo ba na may mga condo developments na ngayon na nag-offer ng mga study area and work lounges within the development. Isa pa na struggle ko is parking for my bicycle. May foldable bike ako, so it's quite compact naman. Kasi sa totoo lang, medyo struggle siyang ipasok at ilabas ang unit. Tadaan ko siya sa elevator, sa hallway, sa kitchen, dining, sala, my bedroom before ko siya malabas sa balcony. If you cycle or use bicycles on a regular basis, might as well go for a property na meron ng designated na bicycle parking. Now, in terms of the unit itself naman, ano yung mga included na upgrades and deliverables? Let me set your expectations, guys, ha? The cost of furnishing a condo is no joke. Like, to give you an idea lang, nagpagawa ako ng regular size na cabinet, nagpadagdag ako ng isang island for the kitchen, and onting drawers under my bathroom sink. And you know how much it cost me? I think around 120 or 130,000 for cabinets alone, ha? And these cabinets, actually, developers can execute them at a cheaper rate kasi templated na yan, eh. So if I were to decide right now, I would much rather go with a unit that comes with cabinets. Para hindi nyo naisipin and para mas mapamura kayo. Other add-ons that you can check out, yung range hood, partition sa CR, yung glass enclosure, bidet, ako rin yung nag-install pa nun. Really nice then if the unit is smart home ready na. Unit ko hindi to smart home ready so kung gusto ko siyang ip-upgrade, magre-retrofit pa, magre-rewire pa, which could be a hassle or costly. So kung gusto nyo ma-experience yung, sabi nyo, Alexa, play all too well 10 minute version by Taylor Swift tas kumakanta-kanta kayo habang nag-household chores, you might want to get a unit na smart home ready na. When I was checking the project plan for Shera Valley Gardens, alam nyo yung napansin ko, wow, most of my concerns dito sa unit ko tsaka sa mismong condo development na tinitirahan ko ngayon, address siya dun sa project plan na binasa ko. So for example na lang, meron na siyang designated drying area sa roof deck. Meron na rin silang work from home provision so hindi nyo na kailangan isipin yung setup nyo. But if you prefer to have a different work environment para hindi kayo nasa stress sa unit nyo, meron din silang study and work lounge already covered by the association juice. And then on top of that, all the units are smart home ready na. If you're more into health and fitness naman, meron din silang indoor facilities like fitness center, yoga, and dance studio. Next thing that you need to consider is your view. Usually, ang options is do you want a unit that's facing sunrise or sunset? I've experienced both. Tatlong years ako naka sunset view but I personally prefer yung sunrise na view. Pag sunrise na view, usually mainit yan ng 8 to 10 a.m. Pero kung nag-aircon kayo na maaga, hindi nyo masyadong ramdam yung init. Or as kung sunset view, the unit gets really hot ng mga 3 to 6 p.m. guys. Speaking of view then very important. Ask nyo kung meron bang development na itatayo sa view nyo. Kasi yun yung hindi ko naisip guys. When I got my unit, pinapili ako kung BGC view or Ortigas view. Mas gusto ko yung Ortigas view. So sabi ko, dito na lang. But, tara! Nung tinurn over, half of my view is blocked by another development. Kasi may naka-pipeline na palang i-co-construct sa tapat ko. Next thing that you need to consider is one of my main concerns right now. It's security features ng building. Unfortunately, yung last two addresses ko were leaked. Kaya ngayon may nagpapadalang mga small businesses sa old address ko. Ah. Imagine kahit one year na ako nakatira dito. And having said that, no, kung ako papapiliin ngayon ng condo, I would go for a development na naka-RFID access na yung elevator so that I can make sure na ang may access lang ng floor ko ay mga fellow residents ko and mga utility personnel. And actually, yung Shara Valley Garden naka-RFID access na sila. Last thing that you also have to consider, and medyo marami itong sub-points ha, very important to that you ask feedback from existing homeowners. Kung pre-selling naman yung property, ask homeowners of previous projects of the developer. Kasi dun mo talaga malalaman ano yung reputation ng developer and yung after-sales service nila. Some questions, how's the make of the unit pagka-turnover? Nagka-problem na ba with leaks? If so, gano'ng kabilis siya na-address? Actually guys, speaking of leaks, three weeks 
ago, nagkaroon ng major leak dito sa unit ko. And oh my gosh, super bagal ng PMO namin gumalaw. Sobrang na-disappoint ako. So, dapat mabilis ang maintenance pag-action sa mga gantong bagay. And then, ano yung warranty policy ng unit? Kamusta yung current maintenance and upkeep ng building na tinitirahan nila? Are there preventive maintenance sa elevators? Guys, very important na may preventive maintenance sa elevators ha? Kasi it's for your safety as well. Also, ask, kamusta yung system for garbage collection? Yung dati kong nirentahan sa Mandaluyong, may schedule eh, 8 to 10 p.m., ilalabas mo lang yung trash mo sa tapat ng unit mo and then may magko-collect na. Although convenient siya, hindi ko siya gusto. Kasi minsan, pag uwi ko, ang dami kong nadadaanan na basura. Eyesore siya and mabaho talaga siya sa hallway. What I would personally prefer for garbage collection is per floor, may designated holding area for the garbages para hindi na rin nagta-traffic sa elevator yung mga nagbababa ng basura and then mas madali din yung pest control kung isang area lang lahat ng garbage. I think ito nag additional feature siya nung nag-start yung pandemic but a lot of developments offer receiving areas na for parcels. So as nyo na rin, in case wala kayo sa bahay, paano yung pag-receive ng mga deliveries nyo? I mentioned the preventive maintenance check earlier sa elevators. Tanungin nyo rin kamusta ang elevators. Well, hindi mo naman maiiwasan na may rush hours talaga, di ba? Same as sa mga offices, di ba? Pag start ng office, saka pag end ng office hours, traffic talaga sa elevators, so hindi yan maiiwasan. But, gano ka reliable yung elevators nyo? Actually, yun yung problem dito sa development namin. Yung sa kabilang tower, they have a lot of elevators, pero may problem with the programming. Like, pag galing basement yung elevator, sineskip niya palagi yung ground. So, dadiretso siya sa taas. Yung mga nasa ground, naghihintay sila na matagal. Walang bumubukas na pinto ng elevators. And then, general policies then for the amenities. Sino yung mga pwedeng mag-access ng pools, for example? If pwede yung outsiders, may schedule ba? So, some developers, pag weekend, bawal yung outsiders. Pag weekday lang, pwede. And decide from there kung ano mas preferred nyo. Kung may outsiders mang nakaka-access sa pool or limited to residents lang. And then last, for homeowners' feedback, is the availability of parking spaces for visitors. Kasi dito sa condo namin, isipin nyo, dalawang towers to, 40 plus floors each. Tatlo lang yung parking for visitors. Diba kamusta? So if your family would visit you frequently, make sure na may parking space for visitors yung bibilihin yung unit. Alright guys, so those are all the things I wish someone told me before I bought my first ever property. Coming from your tita's personal experience as a first time condo owner. I'll just share a downloadable checklist na lang sa description box. Maybe you can print that out para pag mag-viewing kayo ng mga condo development, ma-make sure nyo na you're making the smart move and makonsider nyo lahat ng mga factors na sinare ko sa inyo today. If you wish to explore Shara Valley Gardens as your first condo property, ilalagay ko sa screen yung price range ng mga units and parking spaces. Again, they are offering a 5% launch discount right now, so check out rlcresidences.com. So that's it guys for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!